Green hats are good. Hello. <laughs> that one's Jen. Okay. Jen. Wait, I didn't have you yet. I didn't touch you or you. <laughs> I'm sending you love. I'm just gonna throw touches at them. That sounds wrong. I was just throwing <laughs> touches out. Thanks, man. We need to schedule an extra five minutes so we can hug everyone. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 We'll try to have clean language. Oh, no. Don't There's be no. disappointed. No, 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 I've interviewed you. <laughs> <laughs> the WWE doesn't like the F word or the C word. Jen no. loves the C word. Just so it's you know, okay. we haven't forgotten them. Well, I'm a Joe Central and I've heard both words, so it's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll only say fried chicken instead of. Okay. Fair enough. So, so having seen American Mary, and knowing Get that, this is, that this is a dream job for you, what, what did you want to bring to the table, first and foremost, when you, when you started filming? I think the biggest thing that defines us as directors is we're fans before anything. So when we watched the first film, there's a few opportunities that were missed, and we're like, wouldn't it have been cool if, if Glenn did this? Wouldn't it have been cool? And... Uh, it's really uh, a fortunate blessing that the WWE uh, is really into taking it in a new direction. So when we came up with something completely batshit crazy, they're like, okay, here's the money. And we're like, what? And everyone's all like, oh, you'll be scared of working with the studio. No, uh, they were like, I don't know, like having parents that spoil the crap out of you. So I think uh, people are really going to like the end product. They were so creatively supportive as well. I know that it isn't a script written by us. It's written by Bobby Lee Darby and Nathan Brooks, two lovely British lads who, uh, have the same very foul sense of humor as we do, so it was a really beautiful collaborative process. And of course, Glenn, who is brilliant, had a lot of input as well. <laughs> um, Rennie Harlan used two cameras while filming John Cena in 12 rounds. John Carpenter rewrote John Nader's backstory with, to match closely with Roddy Piper's in They Live. Now tell me how you worked around Kane's persona for the film. We did not use Kane's persona whatsoever. Kane is totally different as is uh, Glenn, as is Jacob Goodnight. The thing that I think a lot of people forget about uh, Glenn because he is so good as Kane is he's extremely smart and extremely articulate and he's it's like working with a theatrically trained actor like usually like when American Mary with Katie I would talk to her every day constantly constantly to Glenn I'd be like I need this and give him a bunch of complicated things and he'd go and I'd be like oh I hope he does it he'd do it in one I'd be like cool um <laughs> next I guess this is my direct yeah the assumption is that he's just a really good physical performer but emotionally he's an incredible performer as well and we noticed that in the first see no evil as well i think there are a lot of missed opportunities in the first film to really have him expand that and he really does get to perform in this one yeah and he's strong like we had three, <laughs> we had three a good example we had three crew guys bringing this giant steel gurney in and it tipped over and we're like oh and we called them in and glenn's like oh you need that lift it up with one hand here you go and we're like he could kill us all if he wanted yeah, to if he snapped that would be it for that all that was of dead us. <laughs> <laughs> also, he did 100% of his own stunts, and you'll see some stuff. There's no wires. That's all Glenn's trick. If people go flying, it's because Glenn was like, oh, shot put at them. <laughs> he can throw a human being far. <laughs> and through a wall in some case. I mean, maybe through a wall. No comment. Spoiler alert. <laughs> What will set this one apart from other slasher films? We totally break the stereotype of what you're expecting. We, there's, I can't tell you what, but I hate formulas. I think in North American horror films follow a very deliberate formula with, okay, we're going to set this person up to definitely be the final girl. We have three final girls. We have Shalom Simmons, Catherine Isabel, and Danielle Harris, who we were dying to work with. So you don't really know who's going to be the last one living. And you don't know, you're never going to be like, oh, well, that's just a throwaway character. He's going to get it next. All of the characters are very well developed. Oh, and I think when we were making the characters, I was like, and this is going to sound mean, but I was like, what would upset my mom yep. the most? And I was like, <laughs> I must make everybody love them, my mom especially. And then if something horrible happens to them, make it so horrible, my mom would like, why'd you... Sylvia, come yeah. on. A big lover of Joss Whedon. I love how he builds up a character and makes you love them, and then he just mercilessly murders them. So now them. they're gonna watch and be like, do I like this character? Oh, they're gonna get it. You're gonna like all of them. But it's it's an art house slasher, which is a weird thing to say, but despite how horrible the things that happen in the film are, it's it's absolutely beautiful. And But I think evisceration is beautiful. I'm just kind of a weird girl. <laughs> Will you be appearing in the film as well, since you tend to? We are slaves to what people want. We retired from acting after American Mary, and then people said, you're a 
expletive idiots for doing that. We, we love you guys. We want you to do more stuff like Hitchcock. I just never want to jump the shark and be an uninvited guest in my own film. Like everybody stop the movie. It's the a director's cameo of a countdown. I may, I think maybe I, we got done up to do something. I would never disappoint what our fans wanted. So <laughs> that is a strong maybe. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Your maybe sounded like a yes. Did it? <laughs> What's the body count? Oh, it's a lucky number, I won't tell you. It is a lucky <laughs> number, and it's more than one. <laughs> How's the gore? Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, so we brought back Masters of Hex, uh, who worked with us in American Mary, where everybody who talks to me about prosthetics, I'm like, I'm in a committed prosthetic relationship yep. with Masters of Hex, because I can be like, send like disgusting videos I find on the internet, they're like, okay. That. We're also such fans of horror movies that when we look at the kills and we're like little sociopath homicidal maniacs. Don't say that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll look at the kills and be like, not nah, saw that, not nah, saw that, that would happen in this movie, that happened in that movie. There's very, very original kills in this and it was really important for us to not do something that everyone has seen over and over again. I'm trying to think if we have, there's only one kill I've seen done before, but it's... Not the way we did it. A cl no, no, we, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's really special. Uh, well, I, I like the cast, so I was like, oh, I'm going to kill you today. And they're like, hi, what's yeah. wrong with her? There's only... Not a lot of people had stunt doubles. Everyone was broken and bruised by the end of it. Oh, they were one emotionally of, abused and physically abused. One of the cast couldn't even walk. After <laughs> we did what we did to them. Ali is a real trooper. Did he make it to the end? So being a fan of, of horror films for so long as you've been, does it make it easier or harder to make a movie like this where you're always thinking of, this has to be more original, this has to be not like this? Is it easier or harder? I think it's easier because I think that, especially in North America, horror has been handled by the wrong people for so long. People that you can tell don't really have a passion or care about it. And for, like, porn, sometimes horror can be like porn. It's seen as this subgenre, well, or you know, it's not at the silence. As long as of the we get the money level. shots and the tits, it's exactly. fine. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I like like The Rock. We are the people's horror directors. We will do what the people want, even you know, despite some people aren't making horror movies that everyone wants to I'm see. I'm glad that you said it was easy. I'm super hard on myself. So <laughs> everybody would be like, "That's a perfect day." I was like, "No, that's not perfect." And uh, they'd be like, "God, she's really insane." You're like Natalie. <laughs> Portman in Black Swan. I'm not ready to bleed out yet. <laughs> yeah. A few more films. <laughs> I think that's all the time they were giving us, but is anybody else? Throw in a quickie. Oh. Yeah, seriously. Uh, do it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys seen, uh, I don't know if everyone's seen American Mary, I, but... I love yeah. They, <laughs> oh, thank the, you. The, the characters that you guys had in that movie were, uh, spoiler alert, you guys get your arms switched yeah. out. You guys being so close, obviously. Just, that, just out of curiosity, is that something you guys would actually ever consider doing in real life? She wanted to. Really? Yeah, she wanted yeah, to. Yeah, I'm super concerned that, like, misery, some fan is going to kidnap us and I'm going to wake up like human centipede strapped to a thing like, I don't want this, I don't want this! I don't want this! It was a movie, it was a 